I think I dropped my phone because I just felt at that moment, this is exactly what I wanted the project to be. And it was sort of like a mission accomplished moment. Like, we got it, we're good. Hi, I'm Emmerich from Emmerich's Timelapse. I'm a French timelapse photographer based in Los Angeles. Three years ago, during a trip to New York City, I decided to meet with Joe, a Weehawken resident capturing a 30-year time-lapse of the Manhattan skyline from his own living room. I came to an apartment where I had this great view of New York, and I just was obsessed immediately, and I wanted to film it. I wanted to film everything. The video quickly went viral on YouTube and was shared by some of the biggest media outlets. But today, in 2022, almost eight years after the project started, and 16 million images taken. It became more than just a 30 year long time lapse. But recently I became aware that I might never see all the pictures. It became a tribute to his father, who recently passed away. A place where people from all around the world can meet and share their stories. And one day in March, right when things were starting to lock down, I went live. All of a sudden I had people joining from all over the world. And obviously a way to see the New York skyline changing over time. You could see immediately that the ferries started running way less often. As I'm based in California on the other side of the country at the time of the interview, Joe and I met through a video call to talk about the 30 year long time lapse. Here is the story. Hi, my name is Joe DiGiovanna, and I'm shooting a 30-year time-lapse of New York City. So this project has been running for seven and a half years. It keeps growing as it goes. The original goal of the project was just to capture the extraordinary sunrises and sunsets here in New Jersey, where I have a view of New York City. As I was developing the project, my father was quite sick with cancer. And so every time I went to see him, I'd be like, oh, I fixed this, oh, I fixed that. And, you know, as the project went live right after he passed away, the project has become a dedication to his memory. Three years ago, Joe was mostly capturing the midtown Manhattan skyline using a Sony A7S camera and a custom intervalometer linked to Capture One on his computer. Today, things have changed quite a bit. So, so here we are, three years later, and there's been some pretty incredible updates to this project. At this point, there are seven cameras running in my apartment here, probably like the coolest thing that everybody was wanting was a live stream. You know, we want a live stream, we want a live stream. So I have two separate 24 seven live streams. Uh, one of them is a lot like the view that's on my Instagram project. And one of them is downtown. So it focuses on like Tribeca and the World Trade Center and everything. One cool like nerdy technological advancement is all of the cameras are now sunk by a single intervalometer. So I have my Arduino intervalometer with the IR light, and then I run a wire out to all of the other cameras. So it's coming from one source. And what I love about the website right now is you can actually see that the cameras are firing at the same second. They used to have separate controls. Now that Joe has figured out a way to trigger all three main cameras at the exact same time, he is capturing almost 9,000 images per day with three different views the classic midtown Manhattan skyline, the recently constructed Hudson Yards, and finally, the downtown view was the Hudson River. If you look closely, you can even see the Verrazano neighbor bridge in the distance. This is the computer that ran the project for literally six years. And this computer never turned off. It didn't crash or fail. It, it performed great, actually. It did, uh, it did bloat a lot from the battery you know, because the battery is not supposed to be turned on and, and it should be changed at some point, come on. That was a massive switch to go from that laptop over to an M1 Mac Mini. Every time I switch a hard drive, I, I have to switch, right? So I have to switch a couple times a year. This was the cleanest one ever. It was literally in between two pictures, perfect. <laughs> well, because I had it all set up, I just, I literally just had to take the USB and plug it into the other one. And, and, and it, it was perfect, it was a beautiful thing.
early 2020, shortly before the COVID-19 pandemic, Joe had the idea of going live and sharing the beautiful New York sunsets with the world on Instagram. The Sunset Club was born. As the world was going through tough times, people started gathering to watch those daily lives. And one day in March, right when things were starting to lock down, I went live. All of a sudden I had people joining from all over the world. Like literally, I would, I would write little lists and then I'd, I'd say it over and over again like a radio announcer. And the list would get full. I'd go onto the back of the page because like we would have like 32 separate countries on any given night. And so I just started doing it every night, right, right away. We're live in New York City where people are applauding all of our frontline workers. Would you tell us your name and where you are and what time it is? I'm Jatin from St. Punjab, India. Hi, I'm Mackenzie and I'm in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. I'm Julie, Perth, Western Australia. And I'm Nicole, also in Perth, Western Australia. Stephen again, I'm Finn, Scotland. I'm Maria, I'm from Ukraine. It's my best friend in the whole world. <laughs> I'm Robert and I'm in Northern Ireland. I am Aunt Joan in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I am Sharia and I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh. My name is Femka. And my name is Ninka and we're from the Netherlands. I am in Syracuse, New York, right on Anadaga Lake. Hi everybody. My name is Sam. I am in Kuala Lumpur. Hey Joe. I am Binoy here in Kerala, Tiruvannadavaram. Hi, my name is David. I'm in Bronx right now. I'm Emily. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Everybody, this is the Kevin Green. I'm Jordi from Barcelona, and I live really next to George. Like. What's up, Dallas? Yeah, hi, I'm Bella. And now we're going to go live to New Jersey. Hey, Britt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Caitlin in Coffs Harbor between Sydney and Brisbane. Hi. Two nieces. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Naman. So we're live in India for the sunrise and we're live in New York City for the sunset. And then lockdown got way more serious and everyone was literally locked in their apartments. We gotta think about the doctors and nurses. We have to think about taxi drivers moving people around. The MTA is under a lot of stress. People who work in grocery stores and pharmacies, all these people have to put themselves at risk to keep it all going. And, and there it is, a double rainbow. We've we said a rainbow is good, but I'd rather have two rainbows and I have like a few friends now, that they're my friends. I've never met them, but we, we hang out on the Sunset Club all the time and they'll be like, let's go live, the sunset's incredible. You know, it's it's pretty cool. That's awesome, it's gather, gathering people together. Um, it's, it's great because my next question was actually, how did COVID affect the project, if it did? COVID massively affected the project. It was extraordinary to be able to check in with people in other countries around the world and just ask them how they're doing. You know, you see stuff on the news, of course. The news is like, things are really bad in this specific country. And you're like, okay, I guess that's the news. But like when you're talking to a human being that's telling you like, this is how it is, it is pretty incredible. Right. Did it affect maybe your time lapses? Like the way they look? Like maybe less traffic, less less boat traffic or stuff like this? It just, it just a literal effect. Yes, absolutely. You could see immediately that the ferries started running way less often and then the cruise ships went away and they didn't come back. The interesting thing was people who knew the project could just see how empty it was. The other thing that was like massively visible was the USNS Comfort arriving, um, the hospital ship with, with room for 500 patients. And I live streamed that and it was like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, there was an actual regatta of boats and helicopters coming down, uh, <laughs> coming up the Hudson River, and it was outrageous. It was only there for a month, though, and then it went away. But it really is going to be strange when the ship is gone, because there's going to be pretty much no movement in the river now.
After more than seven years into the project and 16 million images, the purpose behind the 30-year time-lapse is not exactly the same. At first, Joe wanted to capture the New York City skyline changing over time, the buildings being built and the beautiful sunrises and sunsets over the city. But it's also more than that. It brought people together in a way that he was not expecting. People started using the platform as a way to remember a special day or special events, no matter what it could be. I was sitting there and I got a comment on an image from 2016. So at that point I got an image that was years and years old. And it said, uh, this, this day is when my mother passed away. I am commenting on this particular post because this one was when my mom passed away. It was a very difficult day and it's warming to see how beautiful the day was. And I was looking at it and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. This is, this is definitely part of the project. This is part of what I love that you can memorialize. Like, yeah, you can remember and you can pay tribute. And so I hit reply and I was typing up a reply. And while I was doing that, somebody else replied. And they replied to that person. And they said, hey, at person's username. I am so sorry for your loss. I thought you might enjoy knowing my beautiful daughter was born on this day. <laughs> I think I dropped my phone because I just felt at that moment that this is exactly what I wanted the project to be. And it was sort of like a mission accomplished moment. Like, we got it, we're good. Somebody actually sat in their phone and scrolled back like for 20 minutes to find the day that they lost their mom and the day that their daughter was born. It's pretty incredible. I always got excited when people were requesting days through the website and somebody wrote me for yesterday at like 6.32 a.m. And I was like, wow, this person wants, that's so recent. You know, a lot of times people are asking for like years in the past. And so I pulled up the image, the exact time, you know, and I sent it to this guy. And he said, you know, thanks, thanks for sending the image. I'm, I'm not really sure what to do. Like, I'm not sure. He's like, I'm not sure if I should print this out or anything. I mean, this is the moment that our daughter died. And I was just, you know, I'm just like, I think I had to go cry for a little while. And then I wrote him back. And you would not believe when I pulled up the image without question, it's, it's a beautiful blue sky right before sunrise. And there is a dove made out of clouds in the sky. And it's flying away from, from us. I sent this man the image. I said, I, I just can't believe. I'm so sorry for your loss. I, I don't feel personally that you should print it out. I think what I think you should do maybe is print it out like really small and put it in a locket. And so then if you ever want to open it up and have a look, you can have a look and it might be nice. And that's where we left it off. Since the beginning of the project, Joe had one idea in mind. He wants to offer to the world every single frame he ever captured. At the time of this video, this represents more than 16 million images. Building a website that will both offer all those images for printing while being very quick to load was a challenge on its own. All those photos shot in RAW represent over 100 terabytes of data. 
but after years of looking for the way to do it, we finally came across Matt. My name's Matt, 44 years old, and I write software for a living for my own company. Been doing that for over 15 years. Joe posted on Instagram, I have this idea and I need someone to do it. Who can do it? And I just replied in one single word in a DM and it was me. That's the only thing I replied. <laughs> and uh, 30 minutes later, we were on a Skype call and another 30 minutes later, we started the project. Really? Yeah, basically that's what it is. <laughs> so Joe finally found the right person to work with, but that didn't mean all the problems were solved. How do you build a website with millions of images and hundreds of terabytes while having a seamless experience? For Matt, the most challenging aspect of building the website was keeping it fast, working the way you expect it to work. I mean, it's quite hard to make a, a user interface that's intuitive and fast. So, well, I, th I think that's exactly what we did. The hardest part was getting 12 million images indexed and get them in the or onto the, uh, the the Amazon uh, buckets. Each of the three cameras that are now synced up with the website have their own computer. The camera is shooting via capture software and then as soon as the images go into the computer, I have a little script that's renaming them with the exact time that they were captured. At that point, there's this incredible plugin for Lightroom made by a guy named Jeffrey Friedel. Every like five seconds, the plugin checks to see if there's a new raw file in the basket. And then Lightroom's like, oh, we got a new one. So then Lightroom is taking the raw file and putting it onto the hard drive for archive. In other words, like, we don't need this right now, forget about it. And then it's applying all these settings that I like to the raw file, creating a JPEG, and then putting that in a folder on the desktop where Matt's genius programs are waiting for it. We needed to find something to make them available quick and real time. So they're all stored on, in a bucket on Amazon. Every 15 minutes is one file containing 30 images and they are indexed into uh, a JSON file to be downloaded as one single file because downloading one file of two to three megabytes is faster than uh, 30 separate JPEGs. So there's three cameras, a picture every 30 seconds. So there's 2,880 images per day per camera. The, the first camera has been running for over six years now, so now you can you can understand how many images those are. This is the the first the first sketch of the website, ah, right, yes. and uh, you can see it's actually painfully accurate. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. It's totally insane. And one of the things I I just want to say that might not be evident is I've never in the course of doing this project for six and a half years, I've never been able to easily just like look through all the images. It's never been possible. But recently I became aware that I might never see all the pictures. So for me to be able to actually cruise through all these images is like literally mind blowing. Joe's cameras will capture the New York City skyline until 2045. One time lapse alone will then have nearly 31,500,000 images. At 24 frames per second, the final video will be about 365 hours long, or over 15 days. But this is only if Joe doesn't find a way to keep this project running forever. Check the description below to visit the official website and browse through the millions of images already available. To support the project, you can follow NYC Timescape on Instagram and purchase a print of any of the 16 million photos available, which will help keep the camera running for years to come. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video.